Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning, and to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you've not already done so, we ask that all cell phones and any other electronic devices please be silenced at this time. Leading us in the celebration of the Eucharist is Father Jim. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in singing our gathering song, number 589, O God Beyond All Praising, number 589. Acknowledging that ultimately we are dependent upon God for all that we have and all that we achieve. So we take this opportunity to thank God for all the blessings we've received. Lord Jesus, you lift up the oppressed and exalt the humble. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to live lives of reconciliation and mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you embody compassion and kindness to all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. With you, O God, 
There is no partiality, and yet you assure us that the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Look upon us who come before you, humble and repentant, like the tax collector, and grant that as we open our hearts to trust in your steadfast love and mercy, we may be justified in your name. We pray this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice, who knows no favor. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow who pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To be to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I, I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast and prayed, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The readings this week seem to build upon the call to persistent prayer that we heard last week, where Sirach tells us 
The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites, which would be a disappointing thing for the Pharisee to hear. Sirach gives us specific characteristics of those who God hears. God hears the orphan, the widow, and the one who serves God willingly, and the lowly, the poor. And so Jesus addresses this parable to those who are, it says, it says, convinced of their own righteousness and despise everyone else. So the opening scene that we have is told almost as choice, told almost as charged with as much meaning as the parable itself. Jesus is talking to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Not only those who think so highly of themselves righteous, but necessary, the result of their self-satisfaction that those around them are despised. The Pharisee in the parable isn't just pleased with himself, pleasure in his own deeds, twists, his perception of those in the community, so much that he views them as lesser than himself. Last Sunday's Gospel spoke about persistence in prayer, and now this week it is about both presumptuous prayer and humble prayer. The parable praises those who realize the wisdom of coming before God, not only with awareness of their sins, but a wonderful trust in God's mercy. Luke notes that Jesus told this parable to those who trusted in their own goodness and regarded others with contempt. But there's no indication in the text that Jesus' audience was consisted only of the Pharisees, but all who were there listening. And so the setting of the parable is in a public area, the temple, the temple worship, not private devotions. From the beginning to the end, Jesus draws a sharp contrast between the two men who go there to pray. The Pharisee, who is a pious lay leader, stood and prayed about, prayed about himself. His prayer is a litany of self-congratulation, self-advertisement, self-grandizement, the litany of I, 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 Exalted in his own eyes, the Pharisee looks down on others, adding the tax collector to his list of undesirable companions or worshippers. Well, in the custom of the time, the Pharisee's prayer would be audible, a litany of moral virtue for which he himself, not God, is responsible. It is announced not only to God, in case God doesn't already know, but also to the other worshipers around him. His tithing and fasting are beyond what was required, but his boasting gives the lie to his claim to virtue. So we are regular churchgoers, reasonably generous, the orders of our parish. Might be rather shocking, but sobering to stand with the Pharisee rather than the tax collector. Sometimes we really need to look into our own hearts. How dependent on God do we acknowledge ourselves to be? Sometimes how self-satisfied are we about our religious observance? Are we dismissive or mean-spirited about those who are in the margins 
of our church or our society or outside of both. And how do such attitudes and judgments affect our relationship with God and our prayer life? You know, the love of God can so easily turn into idolatrous self-love. If we regard God's gift as our possession, then the gift is canceled out. Prayer is distorted into boasting by comparisons and with judgment of our sisters and brothers. The Pharisee becomes another kind of so-called tax collector of exorbitant self and self-adulation. And so, we hear Jesus say, if you're humble, you'll be exalted. And to be humble is to place ourselves in the loving service of our brothers and sisters, to welcome the stranger, to embrace the alien and the foreigner, to give comfort to those who are suffering, to offer forgiveness, to offer consolation, to offer love. That is the prayer that is real. That is the prayer that even unspoken, so often, is a source of grace and blessing. Friends, we profess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of the and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under righteous Pilate, was crucified and died. Friends, confident that God hears our cry, we gather now our prayers of the neediest among us. May the Church on World Mission Sunday always seek to carry on the Lord's mission, bringing joy to the poor, peace to the troubled, hope to the lowly, and the good news of redemption to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May leaders of nations not ignore the cry of the oppressed, but come to the aid of the destitute and defenseless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit be comforted and healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all gathered here put aside our judgments of others and see each person as an image of the invisible God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Bonnie Jean Style Severino and all the faithfully departed receive the crown of righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs to be hold in our hearts.
For these needs, and for Bartolo Favorito, Johanna Cristuolo, and the Catholic Daughters' Court 737, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this morning for the deacons throughout the diocese who are on retreat, that they indeed be moved by the Spirit to always serve the Church and God more faithfully. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you hear the cries of those who humble themselves before you, especially those who serve you willingly. Hear our prayers that one day we might be exalted with you forever. We pray all this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is number 695, Come to Me, number 695. Meek and 
Please be straight that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. By ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so now with the whole company of angels and saints, we sing with them the hymn of your praise. upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his beloved friend, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his beloved friend, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout our world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, the clergy, religious, and all those who do all to belong to the body of Christ. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be co-heirs to eternal life. We pray and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With the trustfulness of children, with the humility of sinners, we pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus your Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant him peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. We exchange a sign of that peace. who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 548. Precious Lord, take my hand, number 548.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, An act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are praying with us from home. My Jesus, I believe in your presence in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you.
Friends, let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us the lies within us, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the following announcements for the week. Ministers, lectors, and ushers are needed for the All Saints Day Masses on Tuesday, November 1st. Please see today's bulletin for more information. Our school is in need of a second grade teacher. Please call the school if you have any leads. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pray our, bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Friends, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand to proclaim God's kingdom with power, and to serve others with humility. Let us go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The beautiful day today, I'm sure... Janus has prepared something probably by Bob. Yes. Yes, of course. Stay and enjoy the music. Again, have a great day today.